Hey YouTubers, back with yet another helmet video in the series Helmets of the World. If you're new to the channel, if you could give this video a thumbs up really quick and subscribe to my channel, I can assure you if you're watching this, you will love the rest of my videos and I would really appreciate that. Anyways, today we've got the Swiss model 1918-40 helmet. Now there's also some debate whether it's the 19 or the 1918-40 or 43. We're going to say for the purpose of this video, it's 1940 when this was modified, and I'll get to that in a second. So in 1918, most of the powerful countries in Europe had adopted helmets, and Switzerland being neutral, still saw the uh, necessity and the need for having a steel helmet for their military, so they looked through a bunch of designs, and they saw the German Stahlhelm, and they didn't want to directly copy that and look like the Germans, so... They kind of took the combination of the Stahlhelm and the experimental Liberty helmet that uh, the America was kind of experimenting with during World War One that we never adapted, adopted. Sorry, um, it was the I don't know the code name for it, a deep salad or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, um, so they took those two designs and they kind of melded them together and they came out with this weird yet really awesome design for a helmet. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen these before. So they look like from the front. They're gigantic, and uh, there's really no mistaking them for another helmet. So in 1918, they had a green, all of drab, smooth um, paint on them. And in 1940 or 43, but we'll say 40, um, the shell shape was changed a little bit. Let me see if this is a. Oh, it's actually original 1918 shell that was kind of refurbished. So on a 1918 shell, you're gonna have that really deep. Um, slope to the ear flap. You're going to have the more defined visor and it's not going to be as rounded. It's going to be more down and then straight back. Um, so this was just a shell that was refurbished and remade to the 1940. We'll get to the liner differences in a second. But uh, anyways, in 1940, they said, all right, well, we're going to do away with the olive drab paint, the smooth stuff, and we're going to paint all these helmets black with a sawdust coating to reduce the glare and everything and make them a little bit darker. And then they came out with a helmet cover, which I'll get to in a second. We'll go to the liner really quick on this. The 1918-40 has a simple three-pad European-style system. The one pad in the front, two in the rear. On the 1918 helmets, this band that held the liner in actually went all the way around the helmet. And in the 1918-40s, it only goes three-quarters of the way, or actually it's about 90%, but everybody calls it three-quarters for whatever reason. But it, there's a gap back here in the rear. Why that is, I don't know. Maybe it's to cut down production costs and time. I don't exactly know that for sure, but it is what it is. <clears throat> Some of these are going to have troop tags in them, like um, this guy, uh, Leinhard. And, yeah, this one's only got his name on it. Sometimes they have their service number and their address or whatever on it, just like a lot of other Swiss equipment. And they're usually adjustable uh, head sizes with the pads and everything. There's, like, cushions behind these. Uh, if I remember correctly, in the front, uh, no, you can't do that on this one. Anyways, so the 1918s, you can lift up the front flap and kind of see the year it was made. And there's no maker stamps on this one, which is pretty common for the 1918-40s. I don't think I've ever seen a maker stamp on these. In the 1918s, they have them, but this must have got painted over. I'm trying to look for it really quick. Can't see it, so... Oh well, and then, uh, yeah, 1940, I think, or 43, they came out with this um, this camouflage cover that's actually reversible. So I have the autumn side out, and you might have seen this before. It's uh, the Germans or the Swiss got it first. It's the splinter tar and stuff. I'll grab another cover just loose so you can see it. Um, yeah, anyways, it looks kind of like the, the German Zeltbahn of World War II. Here's the the splinter side and then it's reversible to what we've got here I like this side better it's more interesting it actually looks like the camouflage on Return of the Jedi that all the Rebel Alliance soldiers are wearing so that's pretty cool uh, yeah it's just kind of a blurred color and it's got foliage loops in both sides and this was introduced and held held its own until the 1971 helmet replaced it and uh, it's just held together with a drawstring there's some later ones that are held together with hooks or held on there with hooks um, the ones I have currently have the drawstring, but yeah, this is a really sweet helmet. Kind of a cool history, but again, Switzerland has really never been in a war since like the 15th century, so no really need for these. I did ballistically test one, and it wasn't all that great, but 
your mileage may vary. Uh, probably not, but I don't think they were expecting these to take direct hits. But yeah, this is just such a cool helmet. Um, yeah, so if you know, like I said at the beginning, if you're new to the channel, if you could like and subscribe, that'd be fantastic. Uh, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can get more cool stuff like this. Uh, the link to that is in my description. If not, that's totally fine. I uh, hope you enjoy this video. And if you got any questions, I'll try to answer them. And I appreciate everyone watching. Thanks.